So, welcome to my amateur YouTube channel. Uh, I hope the audio is going to be okay on this. This is the first time I've done a YouTube video with dialogue. I'm trying to look pro. Camera one. Multiple cameras. Camera two. So, uh, there is no performance in this video. I wanted to go over something that I thought was pretty neat. Uh, some of you probably in my Instagram story saw that I uh, posted a little dual picture of a guitar box uh, and side by side of the guitar box open and my cat's playing with the packing material. But uh, I didn't want to reveal yet what the guitar was. I saw you with the box! What was so in the box? I have um, the guitar in here and of course I'm going to spare you the unboxing video which I think is just really boring. Anyways, this is the guitar. There could still be an unveiling. And another reason why it's in this case, this is the first, well, gig bag that my mom bought me when I first started playing guitar. So, before I unveil it, I would like to give a story about the guitar. Um, when I first started, when I was about 12 years old, my mom made the decision, I'm gonna buy this boy a guitar. He really wants one. She believed that I was taking it seriously and yeah, look where I am today with it. Um, had the guitar for about a year, could have been less, but I remember I had gotten it for Christmas in eighth grade. And no, sorry, you know, seventh grade. And then in an eighth grade, it was stolen. Um, you know, I can go into the details on how and why we knew, and maybe I will go into some of those details, but, uh, you know, there was, we, we knew who it was and there was nothing we can really do about it. It's a couple neighborhood boys that were friends of, uh, my friend that I was going to school with. These kids were a little bit older. And my friend at the time, I'm not going to say his name. And if he ever sees this video, he knows who he is. Him and I are still actually in touch. So the guitar was stolen. And we were just so bummed out and we were pissed. My mom was so upset. I was upset. Uh, we were on a mission at that time to look for this guitar because the kids that had stolen it were meth heads. So we pretty much knew, well, they, they want to hawk it for a quick buck. So we would visit and drive around to our local pawn shops to see if we could see this thing hanging. And we would do it over the course of however long. And even times when I was out and about alone on my bike or with my friends, then I would see some rat hole in the wall pawn store as we were walking. And I would say, hold on guys, I'm gonna go take a peek in the store. And I'd go look and we never did find the guitar. I used to have daydreams at school that I would come home and the guitar would be waiting for me and my mom would have a story like the guitar was found um, and uh, the guys who stole it Kevin and Sean um, were hit by a train <laughs> <laughs> and you know since they're uh, since they really didn't have any parents or any family members that really loved them, they're not going to give a, you know, be given a proper burial. So they're going to be incinerated. And uh, I, I, you know, and hey, here's the ashes. So whenever you need to take a dump, <laughs> just put them in the toilet water. <laughs> anyway, um, so let me go back a little bit in time of when I first got the guitar. Um, I remember it was for it was around Christmas. I can't remember if it was on Christmas Day or if my mom had put it on layaway around Christmas. But uh, I got you a guitar, and I put it on layaway. And as soon as I get the rest of the money, I'm gonna pick it up for you. I I really don't remember. I'd have to ask mom how that was done. And I remember when I saw the guitar, because I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what brand it was. I didn't know what color it was going to be. I didn't know anything about it. And I didn't know anything about guitars, period. All I know is that I wanted an electric guitar. 
and my mom came through. She worked hard, and she bought me one. She bought me a good one. And, but I remember coming home to the guitar, and I remember being just overwhelmed with this, this joy and excitement. I just, I thought it looked so cool, but at the same time, I was very disappointed because the guitar was not black. Since I didn't know what kind of guitar I was getting, I was always hoping that I would get some kind of black flying V. Always wanted a flying V. After that, that all passed, you know. Um, I didn't mind that the guitar wasn't black. And I was really happy. And even not knowing anything about guitar, I knew that it was a good guitar. And then would come to find out over some time that it was in fact a, a very good quality guitar, especially for someone who was a beginner. So, I would like to give the unveiling. And here it is. This isn't the actual guitar that, um, that was stolen, but it's the same brand, make, model, and color, specs and everything. I will spare you a gear review. I'm not gonna do that kind of thing where I'm gonna Anybody who knows anything about guitar, you can take one look at it and you can see the specs and call them out. But this was it. An old 1986-ish Kramer. Uh, Focus 1000. Um, it was just not too long ago that I was really thinking about this guitar and I went on the used market and went on eBay reverb and seeing if I can find one um, and I found quite a few some of the people asking ridiculous prices which just that just bugs me when I see anybody selling any kind of used instrument or anything just used period and just because it's old they think it's worth something when it's not, you know, it's really only worth what someone's willing to pay for it. This isn't gold, all right? It doesn't hold any kind of value and weight and all that. It is just a piece of wood with strings on it. But I found this one for a good price. Um, and I was glad I found one that was the same color and specs and everything of what I had. I even down to these old school ladies toggle switches, I mean. It for you know each individual pickup which I just it, it, that was just so funny to me not bad condition considering how old it is it's got some blemishes which is to be expected it honestly looks better than most guitars out there on the used market that are only a couple of years old some of the people out there just really don't take care of their shit um, but it looks great and it plays fine and it sounds fine everything about it I mean it just brings back so many memories um, and I'm glad that I tracked one down. Um, there were some other options that if I, before I saw this one, um, I did see a couple of the red ones that were going for double or triple of what I paid for on this one. But I did see uh, some ones, the uh, other ones that were the same model, but different colors, black, blue. There was one that was kind of this forest green and I was thinking, well, maybe if I can't find the red one, I will get one of the other colors. At least I'll have a similar model. But I was like, no, I gotta have red. It was funny because I hated the red at the time. I was like, no, I gotta have red because it's that's just what I had, you know, when I was a kid. But I, yeah, so I tracked one down and I mean, it's just everything is there. It's funny because I was looking at the same model um, of this guitar, there's some kind of inconsistencies where uh, there, you know, I think they, they kind of made these according to what happened to be laying next to them in the factories you know because there was some that i saw that had uh mounting rings for the single coils and mine didn't have the mounting rings which and this one doesn't either anyway um but rather than give you a gear review and even a sound test demo i'm not going to plug this thing in right now but i'd like to share a few anecdotal stories about this guitar. I, I've shared this story with a couple people. <laughs> but one of the, I remember showing my uncle, and he's a musician, he plays drums, but he doesn't know really much about guitars and their specs. 
but I remember <laughs> when I showed him the guitar and he was stoked and he was happy that I was looking to learn an instrument and I have this very clear memory of him holding it and kind of playing on it um, and he looks at it and he looks at the bridge and <laughs> he goes, who's Floyd Rose? And I'm like, I don't know. And he's all, that yeah, must have been the guy who had <laughs> it before you and got his name engraved on the bridge. <laughs> also, at that time, my guitar had, um, which come to find out later, um, held the, uh, the pair of Allen wrenches, um, you know, for the locking nut and the saddles. And, um, but mine didn't come with that, um, you know, those Allen wrenches that were grouped up in the little rubber. And, you know, you put it on the, um, it uh, fits right into the little C-shaped uh, thingamabob that gets mounted on the back of the neck or the uh, headstock. But uh, I didn't have those kind of Allen keys that would fit in there, but I did have the, uh, the thing that, that the Allen keys mounted to. But um, my uncle looks at that and I, and I go, hey, I was like, what is that thing? I was like, and he goes, well, you know, without skipping a beat, you know, he goes, it's a cigarette holder. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's fucking rock and roll. That is, ro that is rad. So as soon as I start, you know, I'm going to start taking up smoking. I'm going to put my cigarette on there. <laughs> and I remember a band he was in at the time. I don't remember the name. He said, um, do you want to come to me with, uh, with me to my band practice? I'll check the band out and hang out. I was like, sure, and he goes, bring a guitar. Because um, I had no idea how to tune a Floyd Rose and how it worked and all that. And he goes, bring your guitar, and uh, we'll get um, my guitar player to tune it up for you, and maybe he can orientate you on the guitar and all that. So I watched him, and I sit through, you know, through the practice, and I'm watching him. And um, he, I think he had a Jackson that was actually very similar to this one. It's just some old school 80s Jackson. It was, I think it was even red. I said, you know, can you tune my guitar and tell me a bit about it? And he goes, sure. Um, I remember at that time, I mean, I was playing it and I knew that these changed the sound. I just didn't know which pickups they were assigned to. But I just knew when I would play certain things that if I wanted that warm sound, you know, when I would play like the intro to Fade to Black, you know, I would flick on what I didn't know at the time was the neck pickup, you know. But anyways, he tunes my guitar up and I see as he's tuning it up and then he locks the nut and then he starts turning these. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, teach me something. What are you doing? You know, and he tells me, you know, you gotta tune the guitar here and then lock it and then fine tuners at your bridge and your saddles, you know, shows me all that. and. Uh, my just that was just my world was unlocked about the guitar. I was like, wow, didn't know. And he tells me, yeah, you got a good bridge here. There's a, there's a learning curve with it, and this and that. But once you get past that, you know, this guitar will just stay in tune, and this thing is just a machine, and blah blah blah, and all that great stuff. Um, so, and he lets me plug into his amp, and I jam out a little bit, and um, uh, and after that, we were on our way. Uncle took me back home. So, um, yeah, I, I just, I did so many memories and I just, such a sentimental attachment to this guitar. I never forgot about it. I'm glad I tracked one down for a good price. Um, and the guy who sold it to me on Reverb, just great communication and all that. And we had our back and forths and talked and... I was like, all right, I'm gonna bump buying this thing, man. And he sent it to me, and he did a great job packing it, and so came in one piece. I was scared. I was scared about that because I've heard the horror stories. But this thing is gonna stay stock. Yeah, it's in great condition. Um, it sounds great. The pickups work. I mean, everything's original. I want to keep it that way, just for that sentimental purpose. But even though I've recovered this model of the guitar, I still carry baggage about that. You know, it's never left me. Glad I found this. So, sent a picture to mom and sister, and they hadn't seen, you know, this guitar in a very long time. Um, it's been more than 20 years. 
But, uh, and they knew right away what it was when I sent them a picture. But, anyways, that's the story. I also wanted to give a little bit of a channel update. Um, that I have some originals coming. Got doing the editing for those, and, um, I got a, I got a small batch coming. Uh, using, I'd like to give a shout out to Arnaud. Um, he provides the drum tracks for my originals, which are just great for, especially for someone like me, because it's, uh, I do just one less thing I have to do when it comes to, you know, writing originals. If you are, and if any of you are interested in his drum tracks, uh, I will put the link in the description and just give his page a, uh, a, a follow. I will link his socials as well. Also, I want to give a shout out to Chris Perez from Metal and Iron. You guys see him and I get some questions about these shirts I wear. Uh, Jim Apparel with the heavy metal theme. And I will put his socials and links to his website um, down in the description. I would like to also give a shout out to Layla Aziz. Um, got a lot of questions about her, the shirts I wear from, you know, her page and her store. Links to her socials down in the um, description as well. But, you know, she see she, uh, Randy Rhodes, digital artist right here. She makes a, uh, Randy Rhodes right here and the Vinny and Dime. I don't know how, how well that's in the uh, camera, but, you know, and uh, she did the uh, Uncle Sasquatch with my two cats. So shout out to Layla. Thank you, Layla. You're a great artist. And so check out her um, page as well. As far as I know, there's a discount code. I think it's 10% off. Um, if you use in caps locks on in checkout, it's uh, Uncle Sass um, for your 10% discount. So show her some support. She's totally independent. Um, you know, buy a shirt, whether it's an Uncle Sasquatch shirt or if it's a Diamond Vinny shirt or poster or tote bags, whatever, Randy Rhodes, you know, take your pick. I would also like to give a shout out to, I uh, get them, get them guitar straps. Um, you guys seen pretty much almost all my guitars have uh, get them, get them. Uh, I have like 12 of them or so, maybe more. Um, here's one I just got. I'm not sure how well it comes in through the camera, but, um, Great quality. Um, they look awesome. I, I am just a bougie little bitch when it comes to my guitars. So when I have, you know, not only good quality straps, but straps that look great. So thank you, get them, get them, for making me an artist. I am just so honored because I have been using these straps forever. And for them, for, so for me to be a, you know, one of the artists, that's an honor because, you know, that's something that I've always used anyway, you know, and that I will continue to use. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you, Virginia, for you know your support and everything. And I will put their links in the description down below. Check out their straps. Um, good quality stuff. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, GHS Strings. Uh, became an artist of theirs as well, as some of you may have seen on my Instagram, um, which is awesome. So thank you, GHS team. I'm glad to be a part of the family and to be an uh, endorsed artist with you guys. Shout out to um, Michael Piper and Bratcher for the guitars. I'm sure you guys have seen this on my Instagram and my YouTube. Full songs and short clips of songs. Just amazing. It plays great. It sounds great. It feels great. Uh, I just remember being so skeptical uh, when I first saw it because I was thinking, man, eh, did it you know, since this thing is like this Dremel 3D art that it's going to um, kind of impede some of my playing. But it doesn't. It feels great, you know. So, um, it's got a prior pickup in it uh, with the Uncle Sasquatch logo right there. I suck at this camera thing. So, but yeah, it's um, not sure how they do that, but it came out great. Um, so, thank you, Michael. Michael and Michael, you guys are great. Ah, see, this is one of my new get em, get em straps. Also a guitar, got from Michael. Uh, I gotta give a shout out to uh, Insane Skins. I will put the link to their socials uh, down in the description as well. There'll be a lot for you to click on. You guys feel free to check everything out, but check this out. Uh, Michael Piper applied this on the guitar. Uh, it, I mean, it is almost seamless. I mean, you, over the pickup mounting rings and the pickups and uh, the pick guard, amazing. I, a Randy Rhodes with the Exorcist. My world is complete, you know what I mean? 
Of course, got the get him get him strap on there. Blue Cobra matches the guitar perfectly. So, thank you guys for, um, you know, watching the videos and being subscribed and all that. Um, follow me on Instagram, uncle.sasquatch. Um, and if you guys are someone just passing through and checking out my um, this video, going back catalog my other covers and originals, and maybe hit the subscribe button and the whole thing I'm supposed to say, make sure you like and comment and, you know, you guys are going to do what you're going to do. And either way, those of you who are here and watching, I appreciate the support. Um, so, I will uh, probably, uh, not long after this is uploaded, I will have a couple originals ready to go. But, anyways, that's the uh, that's the story of my Kramer. Um, going to have to get a strap for this one. I'm thinking red. Of course, right? And it's got to be get him, get him. So, thank you guys for tuning in. And thank you guys for your support. You guys are awesome. And I shall see you on the next video. So thank you guys. Appreciate it.